is going on internet? Another video coming at you from the Washington Command Post. This is JD. Let's dive into this. Today we're going to talk about all the QB options Washington has right now. Um, they have a handful of options they can take advantage of via trade. There's draft options. There's some free agent options. Um, there's not exactly a lot of options that I'm optimistic about, but there's some options that uh, I think that if we had the opportunity, we should take. So... Some are a combination of longevity, some are a combination of, you know, a good veteran, some are a combination of both. Um, so, I'm not going in any particular order when it comes to, like, worst, best to worst, but I will talk about the, pretty much the ones that I would prefer the most first, and then I'll work my way down. So, the first one I want to go over, um, well, first thing I want to go over is, right now, the only quarterback we have on our roster right now is Taylor Heineke. Um, it's... Fitzpatrick's no longer on the team. He had a one-year contract. Maybe they resign him. I don't know. I don't think they will, but maybe. Um, Kyle Allen's technically a free agent. And, I mean, we might have um, Steven Montez still, but I uh, don't really consider him a quarterback. <laughs> That's a viable option to play, and he's not very good. So we really just have Taylor Heineke, and he's on a one-year deal right now. So I really like Taylor Heineke. I, I hope he's a, wash he's a commander for, like, the next few years. I really do. Um... But I just don't think he's going to be, he's not a starter. He's not a franchise caliber quarterback. Now, um, honestly, I think that there's a little bit of a combination of the offensive coordinator included in that. I don't think the offensive coordinator plays to his strengths. But regardless of that, you got to go off what he put on the field. And he didn't do bad um, for being thrown into a situation where he was not supposed to be the starter. Um we kind of, I kind of consider, I, I kind of thought we were going to get, you know, Haneke, mid-season maybe, after Fitzpatrick just wasn't the great, didn't do that great. Um, that was kind of my prediction on it. But uh, Taylor Heineke stepped up. I think I think he played great. I, I can't complain about him. The season he played, uh, he had uh, 20 touchdowns, the 15 interceptions, 3,400 passing yards. He did only play uh, 15 games. Um, he did only play 15 games, and I love my wife. She's always telling me fun stuff. Halo comes out um, in March. Great. Um, the TV show. Um, yeah, but I, I think Taylor had a fantastic game. I, I can't complain about his game uh, or season. It, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great by any stretch. It wasn't the best. Um, I think he had a couple rushing yards, too. 60 rushes, 300. So he had about 4,000 yards of offense, close to 4,000. He had 21 touchdowns. I think he might have had a fumble or two. Um, is it going to show it in here? No, it's not showing. Okay, uh, I'm not really concerned about uh, Taylor Heineke's uh, stats. Uh, he's he's adequate, and actually, I st still believe to this day that we should have won about um, two or three more games. Um, we should have beaten if Taylor Heineke probably would have started. We probably would have beaten the Chargers. We still, I think, we still should have beat the Saints, and um, we should have beat Denver and the Eagles the second time. So there's four games we win two or three of those, and uh, our season's a little bit flipped. Um, we're seven and nine. Or we're uh, nine and seven rather than you know seven and nine, so I think we're a better team than what was on the field. Our defense didn't really click until a certain way of the season. Our offense didn't click till a certain way of the season. Um, our offensive coordinator, for some reason, still never understood like the how the offense should be run. For like four games, he figured it out, and then he went back to doing his uh, douchebag play calling. So, um, but Taylor Heineke's not our quarterback of the future. He, I hope he's a franchise quarterback when it comes to backup, but I don't think he's a starter. So the real options, I think we should consider this off season. First option is this is the best option. Uh, Deshaun Watson. This will take so much to trade for him. I, I am not even going to try to argue that it'll take probably three firsts, maybe a second or two and a player to get Deshaun Watson. This is assuming Deshaun Watson does not have any legal issues. Okay. This is assuming no legal issues at all. All right. So uh, Deshaun Watson, and uh, yeah, he's a good player. He's a, he's young. He's a, he's one of the youngest options we have. Twenty six. Um, he's only played four years. In those four years, he has a forty one hundred yard passing season, a forty eight hundred yard passing season, and a thirty eight hundred yard passing season. And his rookie year, he was on pace to get probably about another four thousand yards. Um, He's got 104 touchdowns in his career to only 36 interceptions. That is a very good ratio to have. Um, he's also probably got a, some running yards, too. Let me find those. He's got 
17 rushing touchdowns um, in his career, and another 1,600 rushing yards in four years. So he averages about 400 rushing yards a year, and his passing yards, 1,400. So that's a little, that's a not uh, in four years. That's a that's a little over. That's not quite. It's about 3,600, I guess. Well, let's be fair here. His rookie year, he only played seven games because he uh, tore his ACL. But in seven games, he got 19 touchdowns, 1,700 yards passing, and eight inter- and he only had eight interceptions. That's that's he just shattered the rookie passing record um, if he wouldn't have gotten injured his rookie year. So he's a good player. He is the best combination of veteran experience because we know what he can do. The, the reason why I say veteran experience is when you get someone who's already played in the NFL for years, you know what he can do. You have game film of what he's good at and bad at, and you know he can hang in the NFL. That's like the downside to a rookie. As a rookie, you can see all the talent in the world in college, but once you get in the pros, does it translate? That's the risk with rookies. That's why... There's so many quarterbacks that are drafted in the first round that don't pan out. And just so many quarterbacks that are drafted, period, that don't pan out because you just don't know how it's going to translate to the NFL. With Deshaun Watson, we've seen four years of him playing in the NFL, and he can hang. He's good. He's a good thrower. He's, he can run. He's mobile. All that good stuff. 68% completion percentage. Um, just across the board, he's the best option. I would move heaven and earth to get him. I would give up. If it took three first-rounders, so be it. Um, Montez Sweat, and um, maybe we can sign and trade Brandon Sheriff so they have an elite offensive tackle or guard or something. Or franchise tag and trade uh, Brandon Sheriff or something like that. I would gladly do that to get Deshaun Watson on my team. Um, Because if you have him, he's 26 years old, he can play for another 14 years. Quarterbacks play until they're almost 40. Even if he plays for 10 years, that's still worth it. You're a contender immediately. We, if you get him, he's the best quarterback on our division, bar none. Right now, the best quarterback is probably uh, Dak Prescott, maybe. Um, but if you get Deshaun Watson, by far the best. So that is the first option I go with. The second option is Russell Wilson. Now, Russell Wilson gives you a little more experience, but you don't have him for as long. So he's 33. Let's just say he plays who's 40, seven years. Six, seven years. Okay? And... Um, He's solid. He's been a solid quarterback since he's been in the league. He's not exactly a, he's not a running quarterback, but he's very mobile. He's very agile. He's a, he avoids uh, getting tackled. He's got 4,700 rushing yards, 23 rushing touchdowns in his career. Um, he's got 37 pa- 3,700 pa- 37,000 passing yards. I'm sorry, 292 touchdowns to 87 interceptions. Very solid numbers. He has one, two, three, four, four thousand yard passing seasons. He has. Only three, four seasons where he threw more than 10 interceptions, and the highest he's ever thrown was 13. And the year he threw 13 interceptions, he had 40 touchdowns. So he's a solid player, and his team consistently wins. He's only had one losing season. That was last year. And to be fair, he went 6-8. and eight. Uh, Well, yeah, he went 6-8. and eight. He only played in 14 games. And he played like three of those games with a broken hand. So, yeah, Russell Wilson is solid. And he's going to be solid, and he's going to be a fan. He's going to be great. And I, if he, we add him to this roster, I, I, same kind of scenario. I would say that it was with um, Sean Watson. He's immediately he turns the team around. Um, we get better. We we're good for. I, I wouldn't give up quite as much for Russell Wilson as I would to Sean Watson, just because of longevity. I saw on a Twitter where someone was like, you know, they were asking for like three firsts and two seconds last year, and they turned it down. And I'm like, well, the, the value of Russell Wilson has diminished a little bit. He is a year older. He has one less year on his contract. So the more years you have in your contract, the more you're, you're bidding for because it's long. You're, you're getting a player for longer. So therefore, more stuff comes your way. Um, and also, he's coming off a broken hand and probably one of his worst seasons he's ever had. So the value for him has diminished. So I would, I would say I'd give up two firsts. I'd give up first this year and first next year for Russell Wilson. Assuming he uh, sign, re, like signs an extension, um, and hell, I, I would sign and trade Brandon Sheriff for that too. I would I would do a first rounder this year, a second rounder next year, and a sign and trade with Brandon Sheriff for Russell Wilson. That that would be the trade that I would do. Um, yeah. So um, moving on, uh, he w- he would make our team very good. We don't have him as long as as uh, Watson, but we're going to be a contender for every year. If we get him, he's he's the best quarterback in, in the division. Derek Carr. Um, 
Derek Carr is a, a very viable option to me. He has played how many years? He's only thirty years old, so he hasn't played. He's I honestly thought he was older. Um, he has he's this amount of years. He has one hundred ninety two touch one hundred three touchdowns, eighty five interceptions. That's a good ratio. Um, thirty one hundred passing yards. Um, he doesn't have any rushing yards really. He's not um, he's not a mobile quarterback. He still has some rushing yards, um, but he has six rushing touchdowns to his name. Probably QB sneaks, but he's not a mobile quarterback or anything like that. Derek Carr is solid. He's kind of a middle ground between Russell Wilson and Watson. Um, he's not as mobile as both of them. That's why he's third on my list here. Um, but he definitely gives you quarterback good quarterback play for the next ten years. Derek Carr has not had consistency around him when it comes to coaching front office, leadership, whatever you want to call it, he has not had it. Okay? That's what he needs around him is consistency. A good consistent coach, consistent coordinator, so on and so forth. He's not had that. He's had to jump from coach to coach to coach to coach. Think about it. He uh, when he, I think when he came in the league, it wasn't Jack Del Rio, someone before him. And then Jack Del Rio took over. And then I think someone was after Jack Del Rio. And then John Gruden, and now he's got a different coach. Now he's got Josh McDaniels. He had an interim coach, then Josh McDaniels. He's just no leadership, and he's still put up very solid yards um, as a passer. So um, I, I, I like Derek Carr personally. I think he'd be a good option. I don't know if you have to trade for him. There's always I thought that like the way people said it, that he was going to get cut, or um, he just he, he just he, or he, I thought he was saying he was going to get cut, or maybe it's like one year left on his deal. I, I don't know. But uh, Derek Carr is someone I would definitely trade for. I don't know what I'd trade for him because I'm not sure of his contract situation. I know Russell Wilson had two years, and I know that Watson had like four years because he signed an extension before he decided he didn't want to deal with the uh, with um, the Texans anymore. But uh, Derek Carr, like I said, not as mobile, but just as good a passer as the other three. So those are the three like best options I have. There's one more option, and that's Aaron Rodgers. Um, I I. I wouldn't be mad at this option, but I don't like this option. He's 38 years old, so he, he might play what, at max maybe two or three more, two, three, maybe four years if we're lucky. Okay, um, for those two, three, four years, however long he plays, we would be a contender. Don't get me wrong; he would be the best quarterback in the NFC East, and probably the best quarterback Washington's ever going to have. But the problem with Aaron Rodgers is other things other than football. One, he's already waffling about retirement. And I, I don't like that personally. I think he, I think he's, I think he's, he's like a, a receiver diva in a quarterback's body. I think he really is. Um, he would be good. Do not get me wrong. We would be contenders from the moment he set foot in, in Ashburn or Washington's camp, whatever you want to call it. We would be contenders. He has 450 touchdowns to 93 interceptions. He has 55,000 passing yards. His con- career completion percentage is 65. percent he has been playing since 2005. Well, that ain't, that ain't fair. He sat for three years. He's been playing since 2008, and he only has one, two, three, four years where he didn't throw for over 4,000 passing yards. And he only has two years where he's thrown for more than 10 interceptions, and that was his first year, 2018 or 2008, and 2010. He had he hasn't had a year like last year. He went 48 touchdowns to 500. Don't get me wrong. He would be amazing. The problem is. They're probably going to ask, like, the, 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 the price point that I was asked for for Watson would probably be the same price point for Aaron Rodgers um, because he's that good, okay? And, and you're getting, for like I said, two or three years, you're a contender. You are good. Um, you're going to be in the name. Um, you're going to be in the name for a title, potentially. But the thing is, is I, he could come here one year and it won't be like a, a great year, or maybe we just we don't. It, it's Super Bowl, and he might retire, and we gave up all those assets for a player that's going to quit. And that's that's just what I don't like. That's that's more or less what it is. I'm afraid he's going to just play for one year, and then he'll quit or something like that, or he'll just retire, or he'll like hold a franchise hostage. Oh, I don't know if I'm coming back, and then the franchise has to figure it out. I just don't want that drama. I'd rather just have Wilson, Watson, Derek Carr for the next seven years and be able to have a, a slightly better a, a better team and, and go with that than, than Aaron Rodgers. I, I, I would be so happy to have him, don't get me wrong, but those are the things that I fear. That's there's less that's the like downside to him. Like Derek Carr, the downside is um, he's not mobile. So he can he's he can get in the pocket and if we can't protect him, he's is there's issues. Russell Wilson, 
there's not really an issue there. Um, you're not having an issue. Watson, I guess, is just legal issues. That's it. So moving on, now is the next option where we talk about the quarterbacks. And I did not bring up one of the quarterbacks on this. So hold on. So a couple of the quarterback options I want to go over real quick. Um, so this is kind of in order of what I like uh, a little bit. Um, so the first quarterback that I like, and I think Washington should actually trade up for, um, if they want to go get this quarterback, I'm perfectly fine trading up for him, um, Matt Corral. He, he is a, a junior. He's only a junior. Um, played for Ole Miss. He consistently has very good games, multiple touchdown games. He had 20 touchdowns to five interceptions this year and 11 rushing touchdowns. So 31 touchdowns to five interceptions. Um, about 4,000 total yards of offense, uh, 614 rushing, uh, 3,350 passing yards. So close to 4,000 total yards of offense. He is, I think he's a, the combination of like athletic, mobile, and um, he's the best combination of athletic, mobile, and can throw the ball. Now he doesn't have a great deep ball for the most part. He can throw the ball deep, it's just not as accurate as he is throwing the ball um, throwing the ball in the intermediate and short game. He's very good at that. So, yeah, I like Matt Carroll. Um, now I'm going to talk about someone real quick. I'm going to jump ahead and talk about this because I'm going to compare some things. Malik Willis is someone that everyone seems to like for some ungodly reason. This happens every year. Every year there's some mediocre quarterback that played in, like, Division two or some really bad division one to like league and um they get overhyped to hell and back trey lance overhyped okay you know how bad trey lance is jimmy garoppolo is starting over him that's how bad jimmy that's how bad trey lance is okay and the reason why i say that is trey lance i said this for the draft last year trey lance had only four games in his entire college career where he threw for over 200 passing yards. And people thought that was going to translate to the NFL very well. Running quarterbacks do not translate to the NFL. Now, I don't think I don't think Malik Willis is a running quarterback. I, he has some games where he's running for some good yards, but he's not. Like, Pat White was a running quarterback. There's a difference between being a mobile quarterback and a running quarterback. He's a mobile quarterback. Um, Trey Lance is a running quarterback. Um, in a national championship game, he got held to 70 yards passing. Um, he was not a first round. He's a, he played for division two and he got overhyped to Helen back. And the same thing's going to happen to Malik Willis. He's going to be overhyped and he's going to, someone's going to take a draft, someone's going to draft him and realize that playing all these scrub teams like Campbell university and Troy and old dominion university and UAB and, um, middle Tennessee state university. Yeah. Middle, middle Tennessee state UL, ULM, University of North Texas, those ga- teams don't translate to the NFL very well because you're not playing talent. You're not. The one time that the one time that Malik Willis played a like an actual power conference team, Ole Miss, he was held to 173 passing yards for three interceptions, and he got one rushing touchdown. He got sacked nine times. Okay, he's a mobile quarterback, and he got sacked nine times. He, it, 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 it's not going to translate for him. And if I go back to his 2022, 2020 season, very similar. He actually has a game where he actually does pretty decent against a, a, a Power 10 conference, but Virginia Tech's not very good in my mind. So 38 and 35 um, in that one. Um, so he has decent stats against subpar talent. Um, subpar talent. He does not play against really good teams. Um, Middle Tennessee, three interceptions. ULB, three interceptions. Old Miss, three interceptions. UL, uh, two. And then Army, he threw one. Okay? So, he do, he's not translating. And people are overhyping what he is to be this, like, next, the next, uh, like, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson played in a legitimate conference, played legitimate talent, and did both, threw the ball and passed against legitimate talent. He played for Louisville. Okay? Malik Willis is someone I, would, I wouldn't I would draft in the first round. I wouldn't touch him with a first with a. 10-foot pole in the first round. However, third round, late second, maybe early third, a day two pick, I would be okay with. 
but not like a first rounder. Everyone's trying to hype him up, but he's like some kind of first round talent. You're kidding me. He's not. Okay. Now Matt Corral, yes, he's a first round talent. Um, he's not exactly my first option. I think he's the best quarterback, but he's not who I would take first. Um, I think he's the best quarterback right now. Let me rephrase that. So I, I got two other or three other people that I'm going to talk about before, I guess. Um, so Matt Corral doesn't. And if you look at like the 200 yard thing, uh, less than 100, 150 yards, 100, 200 yards passing, Matt Corral has one game in 2021 where he has less than 200 yards passing, and he had two. He had one game in 2020. Okay, you look at um, Malik Willis. He has a couple games. He has a lot of games this year where he doesn't throw for more than 200 passing. That matters. Everyone's, everyone always says, like, why does that matter? It does matter. It's a qu- Quarterback is a passing position. You have to be able to throw the ball. That is your job. That is the primary focus of your job is to throw the football. If you can't throw for more than 200 passing yards in a college game, how do you expect to do it in the pros? And if you can't do it consistently, then you're going to have issues. So now I'm going to move on to Samuel Howe. Samuel Howe is going to be one of my favorite options because not only is he pretty accurate with the football at all three levels, he's actually pretty mobile. Um, he avoids the sack pretty well. He plays decent competition. Um, he plays uh, like South Carolina was a bowl game. Um, he played them. He he played uh, number twenty ranked NC State. He uh, played Pitt. He played Wake Forest, Notre Dame. All three of them are ranked. Uh, Virginia Tech, U, U, UVA, Georgia Tech, uh, FSU, Miami. Plays very solid talent. Okay. Plays very solid talent. In the two years he's played, he's had consistent numbers, consistently good numbers. Um, Five rushing touchdowns in 2020, 30 passing touchdowns in 2020, so 35 total touchdowns, seven interceptions. Okay? not He only has one multiple interception game. That was the first game of the year against Syracuse. Other than that, all of them are multiple touchdowns and then one pick somewhere. And in 2021, pretty much the same exact thing, except for the first game of the year against Virginia Tech, he threw three interceptions. Okay, but after that, didn't have a multiple interception game. After that, he had some five touchdown games um, thrown in there, and he had twenty three touchdowns uh, with eleven rushing, so thirty four touchdowns and nine interceptions. Very solid numbers. I just he played in better competition to me than Malik Willis. Okay, so his his what he's done in games translates better than what Malik Willis has done, considering the talent he's playing. I'll give you an example of how it's like not translating. Um, we drafted a receiver from this from this specific team, the Liberty uh, Flames, um, named Antonio Gandy Golden, and he barely got on the field because he just wasn't athletic enough. But he shined at Liberty. That shows very like telling of not of how ungreat these players are coming out of Liberty. Um, so Samuel Howe is one I would consider. I would draft him right at eleven. I wouldn't trade up for him. You probably could also trade back for him, um, maybe like a step or two, or maybe a couple picks. But I'd say I'm comfortable drafting right at 11. So the next quarterback I'm going to talk about, which uh, he has very good numbers this year. I will not deny that. His numbers this year are outstanding. However, I don't personally like him. I don't I don't personally like him just because I don't like pit players. Um, I went to WVU, so I'm biased. However, I'm going to be unbiased as I can. He does not have one game under 200 passing yards this year. And uh, like I said, he doesn't have one game under 200 passing yards. Now, the last couple game seasons, he has he's not been very good. 2020 had 13 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Not very good. Eight rushing, so that's that's okay. Um, but 2020, 2019 was just as bad. Ten touchdowns, nine interceptions. So he's only been good for about one year. So there is a progression there. He got better. And his schedule. Let's look at his guy. He doesn't have a bad schedule. Tennessee. Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, Clemson, Miami, UNC, uh, University of Virginia. Syracuse isn't great, but Wake Forest um, was ranked 16 when they played them. So they only played one ranked team. I think Clemson wasn't ranked when they played them. Uh, was ranked when they played them. So, um, so he he's definitely talented. I'm not going to even lie. He, he's very talented. Um, I just don't like pit players, but if we got him. I'd like him. Um, but I just there's something about his game. I think it's just to me. It's just like. I don't personally like him, but if we got him, I'd be excited because, you know, he is 6'3", and he does have a lot of good stats. So um, one that I want to talk about that is a dark horse to me, because he's actually been good for a couple years, is actually a player named Carson Strong. Um, 
So his downside, he's got one big downside. He's not very mobile. I think I think the main reason is because he hurt his knee, and he's been playing with a giant knee brace the last couple years, or last two years. Um, like his rushing yards for a whole season was 22 rushing yards on 50 attempts. Not very good. But he, he, he basically plays in an offense where he has to, like, be, keep the ball spread out very much, and he has to do a lot of, like, it's, it's an air raid offense. So, like, for example, 2020, he threw for 2,800 passing yards, and it wasn't that many games. It was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 games. Threw for 20, 2,858 passing yards, 27 touchdowns in 9 games, 4 interceptions. He's very accurate with the ball. Multiple touchdown games consistently. Um, bowl game, he threw 5 touchdowns. Um, again, now, here's I'm going to be unbiased here. He doesn't play great talent. Um, UNLV, uh, what would be his worst game? Uh, what would be his best team? Probably S, uh, San Diego State University is probably the best team he played in 2020. 2021, played Cal. Cal's not bad. K- Kansas State University, Boise State, uh, all, all three of those are pretty good. Um, San Diego State University was ranked when he played them. Um, Air Force uh, and Colorado State University, he was okay in. So he's played some good teams, played some bad teams. He doesn't have a, a, the great roster, but where I will say is some things do translate, and what translates to me is, one, he's got a hell of a deep ball. His deep ball is amazing. Um, the more game film I watch him, the more I, get, I grow to like him. Um, he's got 40, uh, 4,200 passing yards, um, 36 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Um, so And he does. he only passes. He's only got one thing in his arsenal, that's passing. So he has to pass or he just doesn't succeed. Okay, he uh, by hook or by crook, you got to win by that arm. That's 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 the way he plays. Um, so the, like I said, downside is he's not very mobile, but everything else about him is pretty solid. You put a good line in front of him, he'll pick the defense apart. He's got the mobility of about Mac Jones. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, he's got so he doesn't have great mobility. I'm not going to lie about that. So. And one more quarterback I want to talk about. I'm not going to bring up his stats or anything, but his uh, Desmond Ritter is one I would take in, in like the late. So, okay, Carson Strong real quick. He's one of the quarterbacks. Like So last year I made the claim that Washington shouldn't draft the quarterback in the first round unless like one falls in like Justin Fields or something. But I said like what I would do if I was Washington is I would trade with whoever has the 32nd overall pick just in trade for Kyle Trask to get him at the last pick in the in the. Uh, first round, so you get that fifth year option with him, and then he gets a year or two to develop. Um, whereas if you get him the second round, he only has four years before you have to re-sign him. Um, I would say the same thing about Carson Strong here. Carson Strong, you could do the same exact thing with. If you were to get him like at the last pick in the first round, I don't think he's a first round talent. Do not get me wrong, but getting him the last pick in the first round, you get that fifth year option. That's where I think there's value is if you have him for five years, you can develop him for a year, maybe two, and then I think he can do pretty well. He already does a good job of manipulating defenses. Um, that's just the one thing I think he needs. He needs to be a little bit more mobile so maybe he can get his knee a little bit better. And uh, he just needs to learn a little bit more about like um, NFL defenses and things like that. But you give him a good line, he'll pick a defense apart. He's very good at throwing the ball deep. He'll take shots, so on and so forth. Desmond Ritter's a quarterback I would not take in the first round or second round. He's probably like a late third, but he has good leadership, and I think he has good character, and he might be able to develop into somebody in the future. Uh, but he's not someone I would hang my hat on drafting, and that's our franchise quarterback. No, I do not think that whatsoever. Hold on one second, I'm taking a drink. So now I'm going to go over free agent options. There's a decent amount of free agent options out there. And um, a lot of them aren't good. Uh, so first off, Ben mm-hmm. Roethlisberger, free agent. Um, no. Ryan Fitzpatrick, no. Andy Dalton, no. Cam Newton, hell no. Tyrod Taylor, maybe, because Tyrod Taylor, if we sign Tyrod Taylor and then we draft a quarterback, the way that history has been with Tyrod Taylor is everyone who plays after Tyrod Taylor is a starting quarterback ends up being a franchise-caliber like um, franchise caliber quarterback. <laughs> um I don't make the rules. That's just what it is. Uh, uh, Jameis Winston, maybe. Maybe Jameis Winston. Jacoby Brissett, no. Teddy Bridgewater, no. Marcus Mariota, no. Joe Flacco, no. Mitch Trubisky, I, I don't think... I don't like him, but apparently Ron Rivera does. 
Um, Ron Rivera uh, has tried to get Mitch Trubisky a couple times, so he might just draft Mitch or sign Mitch and then draft a player to wait a year behind Mitch Trubisky. Um, I don't like Mr. Bisky personally, but there's a lot of things to be said about Mr. Bisky. Whenever, as a starting quarterback, you took Matt Nagy's offense to the playoffs a couple times. Um, so there's something about him. Maybe he just needs to get in the right system. Um, I wouldn't hate it for a year. I'm not going to sit here and say he needs to be a franchise quarterback for like the next five years. But I wouldn't hate it for a year while we're developing a younger um, uh, prodigy, so to speak. Um, Tim Boyle, I don't even know who that is. Uh, Lane Gabbert, no. Brandon Allen, Mike Glennon, Aaron, uh, AJ McCarron, Geno Smith. Actually, I wouldn't hate as like a backup option, but I'm not, I'm talking about starters. That's like Mike White was a quarterback who played for the Jets this year. He threw for 405 yards and three touchdowns against the Bengals. Um, probably because he didn't have game film on him, but I wouldn't mind giving him like Kyle Allen's spot and let him like try to make the team. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. And then Dwayne Haskins is there. I guess I guess the Steelers cut him. I thought Steelers liked him for some reason. But he is a restricted free agent, so he probably just, probably don't have a chance at him. Um, yeah, so there's not a lot of options out there. So now I'm going to talk about like two more options. One option I actually like, one option I hate. That is not on the radar for a lot of people when it comes to quarterbacks. One option I like is Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew, I think, with our team would actually be pretty good. He's never played on a decent team. Uh, I guess the Eagles were decent this year. Um and with our offensive line, we can protect him. He those he does very well. He takes care of the football. He's mobile enough. Um, he definitely has that commander's feel to him. <laughs> um, but um, make sure this doesn't time out on me. But uh, the biggest thing about him is I, I like his game. I think he uh, plays well. And not to mention he's kind of cheap compared to other quarterbacks. The problem is you got to trade for him. But you're not going to no one's going to trade a lot for him. He's like a six round pick. So you don't have to give up a lot to get him, just like the Eagles don't have to give up a lot to get him. Gardner Minshew is someone I think, if you're looking for a quarterback for like a year while you're developing someone or a quarterback to bridge a year and maybe he turns out to be pretty good, Gardner Minshew is not a bad option. Um, is he a long-term solution? I don't think so. I think he's a better version of Taylor Heineke. That's the best way I could put it. He's like a Taylor Heineke. You had all the solid attributes of Taylor Heineke all rolled into one, and then all of them got like, enhanced and they're just more rounded well-rounded that's what taylor heineke is if they was well-rounded would be garter Minshew. um and then the third option which i don't want i do not want this option i can think of 10 other things i'd rather do or 100 other things i'd rather do than this option do not trade for jimmy garoppolo jimmy garoppolo is not good he his team wins in spite of him anyone who thinks otherwise you we need to have a football conversation he is not a good quarterback everyone's like well he wins he wins because he's on a good team he won in New England because he's on a good team. Okay, He's got the best offensive mind in probably the NFL, one of the best, and he still is not a consistently good quarterback. He is not an option. I'm sorry, he's not an option to me. If you think he's an option, don't. you just need to, like, I don't know, get yourself checked. He's not a viable quarterback option in, in to me. Do not trade for him. Let him be. Okay? Let him be. I would rather trade for Sam Darnold. I would rather trade for a lot of other quarterbacks that at least have a ceiling that you've seen very good things from than Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo is, is not a good option for a quarterback. There's a reason why the 49ers want to get rid of him. Okay? I would rather re-sign Alex Smith or something like that than go with Jimmy Garoppolo. And not to mention, you have to give up stuff to get Jimmy Garoppolo. It's not like he's a free agent. If he's a free agent and you want him for a year, why not? But the fact you got to give up Draft capital or players to get Jimmy Garoppolo? Hell no. Do not do that option. There's way other options out there. If you're going to get a draft capital, get Sam Darnold or something. Sam Darnold, I think, has promise. And behind our offensive line and about, and with our weapons, he could probably do a lot better. Um, I, I know I talked about this a lot last year with Sam Darnold, and you might be sick of it if you listen to this video. But I think Sam Darnold is a hell of a lot better option right now than freaking Jimmy Garoppolo. I do not want Jimmy Garoppolo on this football. I don't want him to ever wear Bergen in gold. All right? So, um, I think that's all the options I have when it comes to quarterback. Um, if I miss some, throw it out there. Um, um, let me know what you think. Who is your favorite option? Again, I, I went kind of in order of my top three trade for quarterback options. Um, 
and I still say uh, uh, I I think we can go. We don't go wrong very much with like Samuel Howell, Matt Carroll, or Carson Strong. I think Malik Willis is going to be way overhyped, and there's a reason why a lot of coaches are like avoiding him, uh, avoiding that option. All right. So uh, this has been JD. This has been the Washington Football Report. I'm sorry, it's not been a Washington Football Report. That's my old old name. It's been the Washington Command Post with JD Plank. So uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, please. I'm trying to get to a thousand views before this next season starts. And have a good one. See ya.